Hi, I'm Nick Houston, sales manager for Gotham Sound and Communications. Uh, welcome to Gotham TV, GSTV, whatever kind of TV really on the internet you want to call it. Um, today we're going to take a little bit more in-depth look at the tentacle sink. Um, we did a kind of an opening box video or box opening video uh, about the tentacle sink when we first got them in-house and uh, you know, kind of immediate reactions, how to use this, that, and the other thing. Um, so today, you know, I'll, we'll look at the software and all that stuff which we've done before, um, but I wanna go a little bit more in depth on the post side, because one thing we didn't do uh, was look at the post-production software that actually makes um, syncing your footage painfully easy. Uh, and when I say painfully easy, it's something that I could do and was actually able to do in about three minutes. Um, so right now, we're gonna roll a little clip um, that we, you know, to show how to use the tentacle sync with the DSLR, and then we'll actually show you how to sync the footage that we recorded with the tentacle sync 788T uh, and a DSLR. So let's roll that footage. That's on you. Oh, I have to roll it. Okay. I'm going to roll the footage. So here is our, here's our footage. I'm not going to mail it. Jared, you, as you can see, I have no idea how to work anything. So if I can actually do this, it's a Christmas miracle. All right, so uh, this is a behind the scenes look at a uh, failed Gotham Sound show. Here at Gotham Sound, we only hire people in purple hoodies. So here he is um, turning on his tentacle sink. It's blinking red, which means it's in slave mode, uh, ready to receive a jam. And uh, now we attach the software and shiny new tentacle sync pops up. We adjust the frame rate. For DSLR, we put the auto mic level on, uh, so that will automatically change the level on the mic. Now we're ready to jam. We want to make sure that the frame rates match, and boom, the tentacle sync is green. We're ready to go. Now all we have to do is bring it over to our DSLR, plug it into the mic level input, and we're ready to go. And now we're rolling. So as you can see, the 788 is rolling. Uh, whoever this crazy person is, uh, doing the cable wrapping uh, is going, and there you have it. So you're ready to go. So now let's take a peek at actually how we ingest that footage. Um, let me get rid of that. All right, so through the miracle of modern television, I'm going to quit this. Uh, through the miracle of modern television, we actually have our media all ready to go. Uh, here we have our video file. And you can hear the time code going, right? So clearly the time code's been recorded on one track. And then we have our audio file. Yep. Okay. Well, we're not and you can hear the audio. So now if we go down to our handy dandy, handy dandy tentacle sync software, as opposed to the tentacle setup software, one key thing about this um, is that you must have a tentacle sync connected to your computer to have it work. If you do not have it connected and on, the software will not work. It actually wants to make sure you've bought the tentacle sync before you can just use it. All right, anyway, so we're gonna go ahead and add our files. Hit the plus button, uh, and we will go to our original media bin. You know, obviously this is not media managed uh, correctly, but you can do it. And just go ahead and open it up. Uh, so you can see from here, that um, it automatically detected that uh, the audio time code on this uh, was matched up with this. So you can see a little green thing in the right-hand corner and the words that say synced right here that actually says it's automatically synced, uh, which is kind of awesome. You can turn the sync info on and off, but right now it says they're synced, so that's good. You can look at the synced map, which basically shows you down here uh, you know where the video is, and where the uh, and where the audio is. So the video track, obviously, the video recorder was rolling beforehand, uh, and the audio track started uh, shortly after. So, okay, well, we're not rolling on the 788. Okay, there we go. Well, howdy, partners. I'm Nick from Gotham Sound and Communications. I'm going to teach you how to wrangle some cable. First, you're going to go over, and then you're going to take that under, and then. Over. You can see why this show didn't do very well. Um, 
Thank you for laughing at that, Joe. So you can see it's really uh, incredibly, incredibly simple uh, to use. That took all of about 30 seconds. It sunk the footage. You can see the time code. If we go back to it, uh, you've got a couple of different options in terms of uh, how you want to export it. You can export just, oh, see it's not, uh, it says it's not connected, of course. Let's make sure, let's try it. There we go. Um, so yeah, you can export uh, just a movie. So you know you can do, if you want to do a proxy file, you can use what your original media is. You can kind of do whatever you want. Uh, and since it's all uh, time code sunk, it makes your post workflow uh, you know, much, much easier. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this on the desktop. Uh, we'll call it the same file name, which is what you would want to do anyway. We export the movie. And there we go, it's exporting. And now it's finishing writing the movie and it's done. So now if we open this up, what a handsome cowboy. We're not rolling on the center. I'm Nick from Gotham Sound and Communications. I'm going to teach and now you, you how to rank And now you have one single tape. file with First, all of your audio files over. in it and, and your video so files take that perfectly sunk. Easy peasy over. lemon squeezy. And we are not listening to that again. That is for <laughs> sure. My goodness. Somebody cut that off. Um, yeah, the other option you can have, if you can show me the screen one more time, uh, is you can also export XML. Uh, so you can export XML for Premiere Pro, for Final Cut 7. Uh, this, and you can change the project frame rate, uh, video format, all that fun stuff. Uh, this would be perfect for, um, this is perfect for if you're on set uh, and you want to save some time for your assistant editor. Um, if you, you can actually do all the syncing on set, generate a very quick XML as opposed to generating the clips, and then Adobe Premiere or Final Cut will actually do the work for you. They'll take the XML file, they'll ingest uh, all of your original media, and all of that original media will be synced together inside of those programs. Uh, so you know, for a DIT, uh, having your own technical sync on set, if you want to have that happen on set without having to make the proxies, without having to make new files, uh, you can do that very quickly and ship that back to post. Um, Stephen Parlington wants to know, is it still happening? Uh, it's still happening, Stephen. Um, <laughs> it's actually happening right now, and Stephen, I don't know if you can see it or not, because that was a few minutes ago. Um, so that's, that's kind of the miracle of the Tentacle Sync software in post. Um, and it can not only sync to audio tracks for DSLRs, it can also take time code that uh, has been recorded as time code on, uh, on other larger cameras. Uh, you know, like the C300 or the Alexa, or, you know, whatever has a time code input on it, um, you can actually read that time code and sync it with the time code recorded on, uh, on an actual time code recorder. Um, if we go back to the computer screen, um, if we go back to the computer screen, uh, we can also just have a peek just for fun because we raced through the, the tentacle sync setup uh, very quickly. And I wonder, I imagine you can probably cannot have both softwares open at the same time. That's true. Um, so you know, here you see you've got, uh, you can have just your standard settings where you adjust your frame rate. You can set it to system time. You can select the output volume, which you know if you're using a DSLR, you're gonna want that to be at mic level. If you are using a C300 or another or any kind of input device that has real time code, you're going to want to have that at line level. Um, you can change the device name so you can keep track of, of which one you want. You can set the auto power off time. This is the amount of time it's going to take to power off um, if there's nothing connected. If there is something connected, it'll run all day. So if you leave a cable plugged in, don't worry about it. It's not going to turn off on your camera. Attached to your, um, attached to your, you know, your time, the device that needs time code, uh, it'll only turn off if you've got things unplugged. Um, so we did that, and then if we go into the extended settings, we can see the device info. It'll actually tell us that, you know, nothing's plugged in, what firmware it's running, the serial number, when it was last calibrated. This one's brand new, so it was calibrated last week. You can look at the user bits. Uh, you can change what you want the user bits to be. 
uh, and you can take user bits you know, from the source. So and you can also adjust the real-time clock. So right now, it's 2.16. That's what time it says here. Um, so one thing I do want to demonstrate also, it's just something that we didn't do, uh, is the difference between the, the red flashing light and the green flashing light. Uh, so when, the, when it's flashing red, that means the tentacle sync is ready to receive time code. So if I go ahead and turn on the 788 that I've got over here, um, if I go ahead and turn on the 78 over here, make some nice noise, and then I plug in, right? So when it's flashing green, that means it's received time code, it's ready to go. Now, if you are not using, you might want to use the tentacle sync without something that has a time code master. Um, and if, oh, let's go back to the computer. I just want to show that you know, we can actually see that the time code has changed. We're now at 847.32, uh, and here we are on the machine, also at 847.39, okay? Um, so the sync is, uh, is perfect uh, from that. Now, if you want your tentacle sync to be your time code master, you have to change it during boot up. So if I turn this off, you have to push and hold for about three seconds. If you want it to, um, to boot up already jammed, you push and hold, three seconds, one, two, three, and go. And now it's green already. So you can now use that. Now it's outputting time code, and you can use that as your master. Um, so if you have multiple tentacle syncs, you can see the time code's different. If you have multiple tentacle syncs and you want to put them together, uh, you set one of them to be your master. So push and hold for three seconds. Uh, and then just turn on the other ones, and you can interconnect them with a standard mini-to-mini um, you know, -mini cable doesn't really, uh, they recommend the Neutrik connectors, uh, which all of those, all of their, uh, all of their standard cables have the, the high-end right angle Neutriks. Uh, but really, you know, we've used it with, you know, this, this mini mono cable, uh, which you can see here. Uh, we've used it with, um, you know, just any old, any old stereo mini that you would find, um, you know, at Radio Shack or you know, with your iPod that you use for your aux in on your car or whatever. Uh, so it really works. It's pretty user friendly um, in terms of connectors and whatnot. Um, and that, honestly, it's pretty simple. And that's everything there is to say about the tentacle sync. Um, oh, one other thing to say about the tentacle <laughs> sync. I learned this earlier. If your time code setting is incorrect, um, so let's say I change this time code setting from, which I just turned it off, uh, I changed the tentacle time code from 23 to 30. So I go ahead and do that. Now I can unplug the tentacle sync. When I go to take 2398 time code and plug it into uh, the tentacle sync, you see how it's blinking red? It's, it doesn't like it. You could not cross jam from one source to another. So in order to, so if you see that and it's blinking red, it's really not happy. Uh, so what you would need to do is, you know, on your computer, on your iPhone, on your Android, uh, whatever it is you decide to use, we're using a computer right now for demonstration purposes, you need to make sure that your two sources are matching. Now, when I take this and plug in the 788, and you better work or else. Yep, now it's happy. Now it's got its time code, blinking green, everything is good. Um, anyway, that's the tentacle sync. We just got a brand new shipment in. Um, we've got a few of them in stock. Uh, so if you need them, you can buy them. Uh, they're like $275 for one or $460 for two. Uh, we've got them for rent. And um, if you have any questions or would like to demo them, uh, please feel free to contact us. Anyway. Um, Thanks for tuning in to Gotham Sound TV about the tentacle sync. Uh, again, I'm Nick Houston. Um, if you'd like to watch this video and more, go to vimeo.com slash Gotham Sound. Uh, you can Facebook us. You can Twitter us. If you have any ideas, go to info at gothamsound.com. We would love to, uh, you know, to put content on that you, uh, you want to see. Um, so if you have questions, things you always want to know about, uh, we're here for that. Um, and next week is gonna be a surprise, so stay tuned.